Captain Fathom. Hundreds of years, freighters have followed the channels of the ocean. These carefully marked sea roads are similar to freeways upon land. By using his compass and charts, the skipper of a freighter knows where he and his ship are at all times. Now, by sticking within the confines of the channels, he can avoid reefs and other charted obstacles, even though the ship be fogbound. But sometimes, the unforeseen happens, and... Skipper, great Scott, look out the port bow. He's ramming us. Give him the horn, mate. Aye, aye, sir. Power to four. We're gonna hit. But the reefs. Just don't read you, Sam. If Chesterfield has this salvage operation and is making a profit... What's your problem? It's costing me a fortune, that's the problem. Ah, uh, you've lost me. He's salvaging my oil tankers. There's more to it. My tankers have been running the cackle reefs for years. Yeah, I know that. Suddenly, every one of them begins piling up. And Chesterfield is the only salvage operation in the area. I'll see what I can do, Sam. One more thing, Fathom. My captains claim in each case they're about to be rammed by a ghost ship. <laughs> what? A ghost ship? These are reliable men, Fathom. If they say they were being rammed by a ghost ship, they were being rammed by a ghost ship. Get me? Okay. We're on our way, Sam. Good. Our course should be south, bearing 180. 180. Got that, Ronnie? Switching course. New bearing south, 180. A ghost ship. Now, really, Captain. Just let me have our estimated time of arrival, Miss Perkins. Speed, Skipper. Full, Scotty. That fog doesn't affect us down here. As Ronnie pushes the control levers forward, the mighty Argonaut begins to pick up speed, and in a few moments is racing toward a new adventure. Meanwhile, on the wrecked freighter, salvage operations are already underway. Step on it, knucklehead! You're not being paid by the hour! Hop to it, you blasted knucklehead! Ooh, good. Yes, sir, my boy. There's a lot of money to be made in the oil game. Weather forecast for tonight is more fun. Fortune continues to smile. Get off the Maybelline. She sails again. As the mighty Argonaut races for the Calico Reefs, Miss Perkins makes an interesting discovery. I don't understand this. What's that, Miss P? These blips. The large one seems to be a freighter, probably one of Basalt's. But there's a group of tiny blips that I just don't understand. Can you get a fix on them? I don't know. They come and go so fast that I... Could be seed in her, Captain. You know, tin cans, bottles, and... Approaching the reef, sir. All back two-thirds, Ronnie. Aye, Captain. Hmm. That is strange. Now would be a good time to try the aqua video transmitter. Hey, good idea. Activate the screen. Skin divers. They appear to be working on those pipes. Miss Perkins, contact that freighter. I want to speak to her skipper. Yes, sir. All hands stand by for surfacing. Ronnie, bring her about behind the freighter. Yes, sir. Uh, I got you, Fathom. You're going to follow us at periscope depth. But what if we run into that ghost ship? 
Oh, we'll take care of that. No matter what happens, stay clear of the reefs. Uh, and if she rams us? He'll hit us first, Archie. Uh, good luck, Captain. Steady as she goes, Ronnie. Hi, Skipper. The skin divers have disappeared, Captain. No trace of them. We'll check them out later. Keep right behind that freighter, Ronnie. Yes, sir. Through the periscope of the Argonaut, Captain Fathom maintains an ever-present vigil on the slow-moving freighter. At the same time, within their secluded headquarters, W.P. Chesterfield and his man, Slag, wait patiently for their next victim. Where is she now, my boy? 100 yards and approaching at about 10 knots. What do we do? Don't sink it! Sell it! <laughs> One more outburst like that, and we put buckshot in your bird seed and let you shoot your mouth off. <whistles> 80 yards. Well, don't just stand there, lame brain. Start the projector. You heard of your lame brain? Start the projector. <whistles> ah! Oh, boy. And now, money long shot, stand by to salvage. I like working for a guy with a sense of humor, Chesterfield. That's because you're sick, my boy. Remind me to get you to a doctor. There's the Maybelline. I just love these old pirate pictures. As Chesterfield and Slag turn on the ghostly image of Maybelline, the freighter, followed by the Argonaut, continue their course. Aboard the Argonaut, Captain Fathom makes an observation. Great Scott! What is it, Captain? It is a ghost ship, and he's headed right for the freighter. I knew it. Hey, we're in the Calico Reefs, Captain. Captain, there's nothing showing on radar except the freighter. That's unbelievable. Are you sure, Miss Perkins? Affirmative. If you see a ship out there, it has to be a mirage. My screen's blank. Well, a ghost ship. What will happen next? A ghost ship from out of the past. If Captain Fathom and his crew could see what was happening beneath the Calico Reefs, they would fix Mr. Chesterfield's wagon in a minute. What's the problem, my number one salt for brain? You look like an electric eel with a short circuit. She hasn't changed course. That freight is still on the way. I knew we couldn't trust Maybelline. We've been working that ghost ship too hard. Oh, boy. Switch to Agatha. The sea monster. <laughs> she gets them every time. <laughs> I don't believe it. It's impossible. What is it, Skipper? It's a sea monster. Hey, now wait a minute. Now what? The freighter's heading for the reef. She's going to hit. Quick, Scotty. Torpedo into the reef ahead of the freighter. Maybe that'll wise up her captain. They panicked. Oh, Tito's dead, Skipper. Fire. <laughs> But that monster! Turn to starboard, you swap, before I belay you! Aye, sir. That was close. In his underwater hideout, unaware that the freighter has missed the reef, Chesterfield can already taste sweet success. All right, me little mud hen. Stand by to salvage the oil. Hold it, Mr. Chesterfield. She's still on course and missing the reef. Pawn my word. What's the world coming to? Don't they believe in sea monsters anymore? It's Father, Mr. Chesterfield. He's sailing the freighter. Though, I might have known. <whistles> ah, Dumbo! Two things become apparent. We must knock out the Argonauts and feed that bird to a barracuda. There goes the old ball game. Oh. We have any of those magnetic mines left? 
Yeah. Release one in the path of the Argonaut. Better yet, release two. Now's no time to fool around, my boy. But the concussion could rip this reef apart. You'll forget one thing, my hairy little mud turtle. If we don't get the Argonaut, they'll get out. But then, they say Folsom Prison is beautiful in the autumn. Fine, Phoebe. Well done, my boy. Glad to see you got the message. Yeah. Captain Fathom. Yes, me? I'm not sure, but these blips suggest two small objects released from that reef ahead. They're approaching us. Fine. Bonnie, all back. Emergency. Aye, sir. The mines, Liz. 50 yards, Captain, and gaining. We're heading for the reef. What'll we do, Skipper? What'll we do? Is this the end of Captain Fathom and his crew? Calico Reef looms ever larger as the Argonaut races toward it. Can Captain Fathom save her and his crew? How far to the reef, Ronnie? I've got 20 yards. Stand by to surface. Aye, aye, Skipper. Range, Ronnie. 10 yards and we're gonna hit. Surface and all ahead full. Done and did, my little swamp lily. And we're still alive and kicking. That was close. The ship is sinking, mate! Save the room! Ah! You're gonna look just marvelous as a paperweight, big beak. Ah, this is more fun than a pocket full of wet oysters! <laughs> We've lost a freighter. She's getting away. Give her a torpedo. Right, little Ponza. Uh-oh! And that'll blow our whole operation. And we'll tow the pieces to the ring. Nobody will ever know the difference. Good thinking. They've launched a torpedo. It's heading for the freighter. Give me a fix, Perkins. Scotty, stand by the laser beam. You'll never do it at this range, Skipper. The fix, Perkins. 400 yards. In three seconds, 150. Got that, Scotty? On target. OK, mark. <laughs> Done and did, Quasimodo. Stand by to salvage. I'll be a blooming son of a sea bass. We miss. Most amazing. I thought I felt the explosion. It's them what done it, Mr. Chesterfield. It's that Fathom gang. They're still about. How I hate a hanger on her. Is it still foggy out, my boy? Like cotton. Then put on the burning freighter film. When Fathom sees this classic, He's duty-bound to go to the rescue. Now you're talking. As soon as he's within range, give him a lady finger right in the belly. This is one torpedo I'll be glad to launch. Fader blip reaching the edge of the screen, Captain. She made it. No such luck, Perkins. Looks like they've caught her amidship. She's burning in two and beginning to sink. Impossible, Captain. That freighter is more than 20 miles out. And there, she's out of range. All ahead, full Ronnie. If our freighter friend has made it safely through this reef, then that has to be a passenger vessel dead ahead. There they go, Mr. Chesterfield. They grabbed the bait. My boy, when that torpedo strikes the Argonaut, you will witness one of the greatest pyrotechnical sequences of all time. I don't get you. The Argonaut's an atomic submarine. When her furnaces erupt, she'll make the 4th of July look like a cap pistol. Ooh, boy. Stand by the launch torpedo. A motion picture of a burning vessel. Then Captain Fathom racing to the rescue. Will he discover this trick in time? Little does Captain Fathom realize that the burning freighter he goes to rescue is nothing more than a ghostly image projected on the fog bank by Mr. Chesterfield, king of the salvagers. 
Ready as she goes, Ronnie. Right, sir. Captain Fathom, will you listen to me? Make it quick. That burning freighter does not register on radar. There's something dreadfully wrong here. That is an understatement, Miss Perkins. Stand by to surface, Scotty. Ronnie, all ahead full. What do you make of it, Scotty? The eyes tell me there's a burning vessel dead ahead, Skipper. But why don't she make a mark on radar? And how can she float in the air like that? There's your answer. What, blue blazes? A picture projector, Scotty. And unless I miss my guess, an epic by W.P. Chesterfield. Captain! Torpedo heading toward us! Pull the plug, Scotty. Dive! Dive! <laughs> Just like shooting a can on a fence. We're right on him. Remind me to put another gold star in your brownie chart, Sly. <laughs> Torpedo Perkins. She hits us in seven seconds. Hello, Davy Jones. The laser beam, Scotty. On target, Skipper. Never mind the range. Fire! Fire! We got him. But she didn't explode. He's on the bottom. Stand by to salvage! Well, don't just stand there, my boy. This is the prize catch of the season. Are you all okay? My ears are ringing. Busted lines in the furnace is skipping, but the automatic cutoff is working. No danger there. You feel up to another go around with a laser, Scotty? Just name it, Skipper. Perkins, get me a bearing on, on that reef. Range, 258. Relative bearing, 123 degrees. Fire at will. <laughs> That did it. Yahoo! Get this baby to the surface, Ronnie. Yes, sir. If I've said it once, I've said it a thousand times. I know. Don't mess with Captain Fathom. Ah! Dumbo! Uh oh! My only regret is that I didn't trade you in on a pocket full of grapes. It's a long time ago. Ahoy, Chesterfield. You need a lift to the brig? I can't say as I appreciate your humor, Fathom. I've swallowed enough salt water to float the Queen Mary with a full crew and passengers aboard. An uncomfortable situation, to say the least. I'm surprised at you, WP. You know you couldn't get away with this. I've only one thing to say, Captain. Yeah? Know anybody that would like to buy a good used salvage operation? Whoa, boy! <laughs> <laughs> Thank you.